Praise God, revival has come. Hallelujah. What testimonies we had today. All glory to God. <clears throat> so let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are such a merciful God. And Lord, this morning we have already heard and we have already proclaimed and declared and, oh God, shouted the fact, oh God, for the heavens to hear, for the earth to understand that you are the living, eternal God, God of all mercies, of compassion, Lord, your tenderness reaches to the uttermost and you are able to lift us up even though we have fallen down to the depths. Your hand will still be underneath us. So Lord, we pray that even as we have this time to look into your word, O oh God, minister to us, O oh Lord, we pray. Let nothing not a single word that you want your people to hear will go unsaid or unspoken. And we pray that, Lord, every word will be received by prepared ground, O oh God, that it can bear hundred, sixty, and thirty-fold for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, let me also share a testimony. Uh, 2023 has been, as, uh, has been a blessed year for us. Um, we thank God for his mercies. He started with, you know, we were involved in organizing a healthcare conference for healthcare professionals last year. And it was a blessing. Many things had to happen. So many unknown things, but God blessed it with his presence. And uh, the second special thing was we were led to go as a team to pray for Christian Medical College, Ludhiana, as it has been going through so many difficulties and how God wonderfully arranged for different people to come from different parts. And we had a, a very special season of interceding uh, in CMC. And... Um, you know, the third thing that uh, Anu has just mentioned is adopt a school for prayer. We have been praying in the Regional Transformation Network where we come together once a month to pray. Every time we were led to pray only for the next generation. Usually we have different themes. You know, every month a different theme. But last year, all through, just the next gen, next gen, next gen. And so God gave us this idea to adopt schools for prayer and last evening uh, we had a very blessed time of testimonies only three months into this God is doing things and I must congratulate New Life Fellowship Dubai because I think the maximum number who has signed up for adopt a school scheme has been from New Life Fellowship Dubai okay Thank you, Pastor, for encouraging and sharing and talking about it. How many of you have signed up? Adopt a school. Praise God. So others can also sign up. I missed you all last night, but I want you to know that your prayers are being answered. So I just want to tell you, uh, there was a testimony yesterday of, you know, one of the things that when revival happens, in Zechariah chapter 8, it mentions about in the last days when the Spirit, God pours out His Spirit, you know, ten heathens, Gentiles will take hold of one Jew and say, we want to go with you because we know God is with you. Hallelujah. 
yesterday we had a testimony of one child one christian child in the school where many have been asking telling this child god is with you please pray for us hallelujah so your prayers are precious and god is hearing your prayers and answering and as i was reading and preparing for this message about revival i was reading through some revivals and interesting to know i had heard about i think even pastor mentioned about the moravian revival i want to encourage you there is a 80 page short book available absolutely free you just have to google moravian miracle a book written by jason hubbard my name but a different spelling we all know about the sinsendorf maybe pastor mentioned that name i think in one of his uh, i was listening to your talks one of his revival talks uh, but the whole thing started with one little girl all young people are very precious very important one little girl lost her mother in that community moravian community and god visited her when god visited her she shared it with her girlfriends and god visited them and these people children girls started praying and they were praying and they were worshiping through the night such joy such laughter but such repentance in the day time they shared it with the boys and it happened in the boys camp where the boys were as it went on for few days few weeks then actually when sinsendorf was speaking in a communion service the holy spirit fell so the youth are very important young people don't consider yourself i'm an old man don't think that you are in you are insignificant god will do great and mighty things and i believe if this nation is to be changed it will happen because god will touch the young people when the young people go to the schools and then they take hold of their child somebody we need and then they stand and pray they can take the name of jesus nobody will stop them god will do mighty things um last year i started with this word that god gave me was brokenness and i shared about it the year 23 is over but i must confess that there is still so many areas in my life that needs to be broken i have preached on brokenness but god will tell me you are still not broken and uh, towards the end of the year uh, you know i was talking on the imperatives of the kingdom and i was trying to remember myself and i had forgotten the fourth and the fifth i was struggling maybe because i am old my memory is failing i don't know the five imperatives of the kingdom and uh, just to remind you you remember the five imperatives you must be born again must worship in truth and in spirit must deny yourself and take up the cross are you carrying the cross am i carrying the cross then you must be the servant and finally must love one another as i have loved you
in all these areas. I know we are all confident about our salvation. We worship in truth and in spirit. But what about the other ones? How many times I have refused to carry the cross when I had the opportunity to do it? I took the easy way. How many times when I had to be the servant, I wanted to be the master? And how many times when God was expecting me to love the unlovable maybe in my heart, but God was willing to give me his spirit to love like he loved. I was withdrawing and I was holding back. <clears throat> and this is the year of revival in our church. But it is a year of revival for us, for me. And it's my prayer. You know, there is a Negro spiritual which we used to sing when years ago that says, I am the one standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister. It's me who is standing in the need of prayer. It is not UAE that needs revival. It is not, you know, it is not the city of Dubai that needs revival. It is not he or she. It is not the other church. But it is me who is standing in the need of revival. So, the word that God has given me, I was been praying for a word for this year and the word that, you know, I, I hope you understand when I ask God for a word, it is where I, God has to work in my life and I need to work with God in my life. And the word that came to me is courage. And then I realized that courage is very often connected with hope. When you have hope, then you have courage. If you are thinking negative and you are hopeless, then you become fearful. Roshan shared his testimony. He had the hope because he knew that God will. That hope gave him the courage. So as we begin this time, this season of, of meditating, of working, preparing our hearts for revival, let us have hope to begin with that God will revive us. He will not pass us by. God has not given this word to be put up here as a poster in New Life Fellowship by chance. God is behind it. So if God is behind it, he will bring it to pass. So first of all, let us have hope in our hearts that 2024 is a year of revival, but year of revival for me. Not for my brother, not for my wife, or for my husband, but for me. So that hope is very vital for us. And uh, the revival, as we think of it, begins in the heart of God. Every revival story, as you look at in the Bible and after in the church history, God decided. It's the sovereign plan of God. But at the same time, there is a man, there is a woman, there is a group of people who God uses. And then beyond that, as the revival spreads, there is a people who have responsive hearts to be moved in the plan of God. The sovereign purpose and plan of God and the free will and choices that we make, we don't know where it meets. It's a top secret. Only God only knows. But God is sovereign. He decides. He brings revival. 
but also there is a part for us to play where we are responsive where we as one man one woman we respond to god and the word revival starts with one letter what is the first letter of revival r r stands for repentance if you read the church history of revivals every revival started with the holy spirit convicting people of sin not the big sins but they were convicted that they were so unworthy to stand before god so repentance and returning is the key to the revival in my heart if god has to use 2024 as a as a year of revival it begins with brokenness and repentance in my heart it is not repentance of the other person you know don't think the enemy will try to tell you that if revival has to come to new life fellowship the pastor has to repent the elders have to repent but it is you it's me one man one woman god has used in the past as we look at the church history as you look at the revival history it is one man one woman revival in me makes all the difference and it starts with repentance if you look at the revivals in the bible the greatest revival in the bible in the old testament which is the greatest revival story in the old testament jonah 100000 people a sea whole city repented and turned to god and god had decided because uh, their sin and wickedness was so much but god gave them one chance saint jona who was refusing to go but jona finally went and he said only one thing 40 days what he longed to see happen nineveh will be destroyed 40 days and nineveh will be destroyed the shortest message the shortest sermon but a whole city of people repented and god relented and poor jona was so angry because he was waiting for the 40 days and the destruction because they were a wicked people the other greatest revival we can think of is in the new testament where is it in the acts of the apostles peter preaching what a revival acts chapter 2 verse 38 the message is repentance repent and peter said to them repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of jesus christ the first word of the revival message is repent and not anybody else but you and me one man one woman you know jesus would come here on this day if he wants to bring revival he will come to you personally he will say i want you to repent so that revival can come and as i was thinking about this i have been convicted again and again about the importance of 
God moves mightily, nations and everything. But it is that single person, you, me, that is so special for God. And so this morning, may God speak to our hearts as Jesus. You know, the, after the Acts of the Apostles and after the first revival, great move of God. Years went, decades passed. And when John was getting old, maybe other disciples have all been killed. And then John has this vision in the book of Revelations. The church has gone on for some time. And Jesus speaks to the churches. Revelations chapter 2 and chapter 3. And what is Jesus telling? Jesus tells in Revelations chapter 2 to the church in Ephesus. Jesus says, the height from which you have fallen, you have lost the first love. It is very much possible for us as New Life Fellowship to continue as we are. We are a good people. We, we get up in the morning, we do read our prayer, do read the Bible, and uh, we don't shout at anybody. We don't use bad words. And we are good people. We come to the church every Sunday. Our children are going to Sunday school. And we have a nice worship and a worship team. And we have a good pastor and elders who fear God. And then our prayers are answered. We get promotions in our job. We get good salaries. We have everything seems to be good. But the question that Jesus would ask is, have you lost your first love? Repent. Jesus would say, repent. The revival, there is no revival without repentance. And then as we come to Revelations chapter 3, again we see the church of Laodicea. Everything is smooth and comfortable. And Jesus says, you buy, buy from me. You think you are able to see, but you are blind. We can be so blinded with our rituals. Any church, any system, if the first century church with all that thing that had happened in Ephesus, amazing thing God did. Revival, great revival. But as few years went by, Jesus had to tell the church to repent. So we have to be careful. Uh, if Jesus had to tell that church to repent, remember that we need to search our hearts, spend time in God's presence, so that individually God may revive us. And as we are individually revived, the church will be revived, the city will be revived, the nation will be revived. And every time when there is a repentance, you know, God, there's amazing things. Individual repentance leads to great blessing. I was looking in the word of God and uh, I was reminded in the genealogy of Jesus' birth, in the way God planned for the salvation to come to this world and the Son of God to be born in this world, in that lineage. 
every time there was a repentance there was a great blessing i was reading in genesis you see the story of judah you know the story of story of judah he had sinned judah and tamar it is in genesis you don't have the time to read the whole thing but you know the story judah had not done what he should have done for his daughter in law when his son passed away and but daughter in law was very smart and finally judah is having a relationship with his daughter in law and she becomes pregnant he is judah is very quiet he thinks nobody knows but when she becomes the new ghost comes judah is very angry he wants her to be burned to death because of adultery and then she she sends the staff and the seal revealing to judah quietly who is this this is the man this is the man and judah repented and said she is more righteous than me and then comes paris and then can the genealogy continues and jesus is born out of that repentance of judah judah could have even at that time he could have refused he could have hidden we don't know what he could have done but with that shame and repentance paris was born and then on that line comes david personal you are that man he see it in david also when david had sinned for a year he quiet he left lived as though nothing happened we all can go as nothing happened with our sin for some time but one day it will come out but praise god when it comes out it's an opportunity for us to repent and then for god to bless us beyond what we can imagine repentance brings amazing blessing in second samuel i think it's in chapter 12 you read the story of nathan the prophet coming to david he tells the whole story quietly about the story of the eve and then how the the rich man how he kills the eve lamb of the of his uh, poor laborer and then and then david gets angry he says how can this happen in my kingdom and then nathan says you are that man you single person separated out all the crowd of people in judah but you are that man and then david had the authority at that time like other people have done to kill nathan just one word david had to say finished that's how john the baptist he was beheaded because one king 
wanted to please his guests. But David repented, I have sinned. And David continued to be a blessing. And Jesus is called the son of David. <clears throat> Praise God. Jesus, prophecy about Jesus in Isaiah says, a repentant heart God will not reject. It says in Isaiah 42, 3, it says, a bruised reed, he will not break. A smoldering wick, he will not snuff out. Because of that, there is hope for me. Because of that, there is hope for each one of us. And You remember Peter. Peter had sinned three times, denied. At the third time, Jesus turned and looked at Peter. In Luke's Gospel, it is mentioned very clearly. Jesus turned and looked at one man. There were a lot of crowd of people. He just turned and looked at Peter. And Peter wept bitterly. And the same Peter is the one who is standing and speaking to thousands, saying, repent, as we read. Shall we stand in God's presence? This is a very special moment. If 2024, Jesus has chosen as the year of revival, this morning, He's wanting to revive one person. He begins with one man, one woman. Even though we are many people here, let's forget about everyone else. Let's be alone. And let Jesus speak to you. I gave my all for you, Jesus says. Did not hold back anything. What are you? trying to hold back from me. He says, you leave everything and come. Don't look at anyone. Don't think of what they have done or what they will do. Do not fear man. Do not try to please man at all. I am enough for you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. There is no need for any pretense with me. I know your heart. I know your thoughts. I know all about you.
but I have come that you will have life and life in abundance. But I want you to leave everything. Hold on to nothing so that you can have everything of me. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, that you will revive us. Because that is your heart's desire. Help us, Lord, that I will cooperate with you in what you want to do in my life. And Lord, help my brothers and my sisters to do the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the love of God our Father, and the fellowship and the communion and the power of the Holy Spirit abide with each one of us, our families, this church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.